Dear friends, um, I feel honored to open this important conference of Congress against military bases and war in this uh, challenging and I have to say also very strange time. It wasn't easy for many to come here, and so that's why we have to work online uh, as well. So I, I would like to, to give a small context on in which the military bases are, um, we find the military bases to come in the second part to the military bases itself. Looking back to the first years after the end of the Cold War, uh, they were promising. For a moment, we cherished this illusion that the heyday of militarism uh, had come to an end. Global military spending fell sharply in the mid of the 90s, and after the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact, NATO seems to have lost its raison d'etre. But in the late 90s, the Yugoslavia crisis was the ideal opportunity the NATO established, establishment dreamed of to reinvent itself and to transform into a global intervention organization. Although such an assignment is not provided for by the NATO treaty, as you know, in Article 5, it's essentially a uh, so called defense organization. Soon after came 9 11, the invasion of Afghanistan and the Iraq war. In late 2011, NATO Secretary General at the time, Rasmussen, called the NATO war in Libya the most successful operation in the history of NATO. But years of war and occupation plunged Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya into chaos and more violence. NATO became global not only through military interventions, but also by making dozens bilateral and multilateral agreements with third countries and regions in the Pacific, Middle East, Latin, Latin America, and other parts of the world. The war on terror served as a pretext to strengthen foreign military presence for making military cooperation and training deals with local governments and to increase importance of overseas military bases, which are primarily military extensions of geostrategic uh, interests. NATO used the war in Ukraine to sell the need for increased national defense budgets or military budgets. We have been witness how President Trump pressured other NATO member states to act quickly, calling NATO obsolete. Since 2015, the defense budgets of the European NATO member states and Canada have increased by 21% in five years. In 2019, all NATO members spent together $987 billion. That's more than half of world's military expenditures. Even so, during the outbreak of COVID-19, NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg declared that NATO expects allies to increase defense spending despite the economic shock of the pandemic. In a multipolar world with several emerging superpowers, the military alliance seems determined to help maintain Western military, political, and economic hegemony in the world. And it's true that China is trying to expand its global influence as is the case with the famous Belt and Silk Initiative, as any other country is doing to defend its interests. But so far, it has been acting mainly with political and economic tools. Even when China's defense budget, budget is growing so strongly, it represents still less than a third of what the US is spending. With only one foreign base in Djibouti, the focus of China is very much on defending its borders, and interests in nearby areas, and unlike NATO, not to become a global military force uh, and setting up foreign military interventions. In Europe, propaganda is focusing on fabricate, uh, fabricated Russian threats to ramp up military activity in Poland and the Baltic states, although Russia's defense budget is only 7% of what NATO member states spend today. Coming to the military bases, the US is estimated to have around 800 overseas military bases and facilities in more than 80 countries. And there are many figures circulating, some figures go up to 160, depending on the definition on what is a military base uh, or a facility. 
And the annual cost for personal maintenance and transportation is estimated at 50 billion, 50 billion sorry, uh, dollars. If I include 90 billion costs for overseas contingency operations, US overseas military presence and activities is worth 140 billion dollars. That's a huge amount of money. US is by far the most important foreign military power, controlling 90 to 95 percent of the total number of military bases and facilities in the world. France, the United Kingdom, and Russia have each between 10 and 20 foreign military bases. The main host countries are primarily the countries that lost World War II, being Germany, Japan, and Italy. And South Korea became another important host country of the Korean War 5053. Today, the trend seems to be fewer military bases, although in more countries with more well-equipped, rapid, deployable troops by making more use of local military forces. Last decade, military interest in resource-rich Africa has increased sharply. At least 13 countries have a substantial presence at the continent and Africa, with the US around 10,000 troops and France 7,500 troops as main foreign powers. The strategic horn of Africa is in the spotlight because of its geostrategic location. Maybe a few words, a big opportunity, uh, about my own country. Belgium hosts both the NATO headquarters in Brussels, which is the political and administrative center of the alliance, and also the supreme headquarters allied powers in Europe, the shape in Castro, that is the headquarter of the allied common operations. Brussels hosts also many European institutions like the European Defense Agency with its numerous lobbyists from the military industrial complex. In June, as you know, especially in Germany, in June 2020, President Trump announced the withdrawal of about one third of US troops from Germany. And you, I think you can celebrate now. <laughs> <laughs> um, his defense secretary, Mark Esper, declared that 12,000 troops would be relocated into Eastern Europe on a so-called rotational basis, Italy and Belgium. The US European Command, the Special Operations Command Europe, and Africa would be moved to Mons in Belgium, from Stuttgart to Mons in Belgium. But this announcement, and this shows the arrogance of the imperial power, this announcement was made without even asking the permission of the countries concerned. And it's disturbing that in my country, in Belgium, this hasn't caused any political discussion worth the name, although the security implications are great, I guess. Last, why should we oppose foreign military bases? First, military bases are the backbone of the military systems of the US, NATO, and the European Union. They are used intensively in military maneuvers and are an integral, integral part of war campaigns. Military bases in Turkey, Germany, Saudi Arabia, and the Gulf states were crucial in the war against Iraq, 2003. Military facilities in Iraq and Syria are used for aerial bombardments in the fight against the Islamic State, but according to war, air, our air wars, sorry, uh, an international NGO, uh, killing between 8,000 and 13,000 civilians. According to reports, the Air Force base in Ramstein is used in the drone war against terror suspects worldwide, killing many civilians in countries like Yemen and Pakistan as well. Second, military bases and installations play an important role in undercover operations, more specifically of the CIA. According to reports published this summer, the CIA, with the support of British intelligence, set up armed and trained paramilitary forces in Kenya, responsible for extrajudicial executions of terrorist attacks. Another example, Manta Air Base in Ecuador was used for Plan Colombia, the war on drugs, and against the FARC guerrillas until President Rafael Correa ordered the withdrawal of US troops in 2009, once the 10 year agreement was expired. I come later back to this. Um, this case in uh, London. Third, 
Military bases are part of the rendition programs launched in the 90s, in which terror suspects have been transported to destinations for torture or imprisonment without legal assistance or trial. The best known example is, of course, Guantanamo, but several overseas bases, uh, including in Europe, have been involved. Fourth, US uses the, its military bases in Belgium, in Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and Turkey to store nuclear weapons. And in wartime, these B-61 nuclear bombs must be deployed, except in Turkey, by pilots of the countries concerned under NATO's nuclear sharing policy. And this is, of course, clearly a violation of Article 1 and 2 of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, which prohibits direct or indirect control of nuclear weapons by non-nuclear weapon states. Fifth, five, military bases cause many environmental problems due to the release of toxic substances and pollutions of, pollution of water, the use of the depleted uranium, or pollution from transport. The United States military apparatus is one of the biggest greenhouse, greenhouse gas emitters. In the Mariana Islands, like Guam, Tinian, there is resistance from the local population due to the environmental impact of gunnery and the planned expansion of a naval base for the resettlement of 5,000 Marines from the Japanese naval base in Okinawa. This resettlement is needed or necessary because of popular resistance against the large military base in Okinawa. I think we later will have uh, some examples by some of uh, Six military bases have historically been responsible for sexual exploitation of women, such as through institutional organized prosecution during the wars in Korea and Vietnam. And that continues <coughs> until today. In Djibouti, for example, the presence of several military bases and rapidly increasing military personnel is the driving force within, behind the sexual exploitation of women and girls. And each year, tens of thousands of refugees across the country, while the unemployment rate is 60, which makes them, uh, them very vulnerable for uh, sexual exploitation. In 2015, the UN Human Rights Council urged the US military to combat sexual violence and ensure the legal prosecution of perpetrators. Much sexual violence by the military remains unpunished. In Okinawa, where 34 US military bases are located, there have been only seven convictions in 120 reported uh, rape cases over the past few decades. Seven, last and seventh point, or why we should oppose military bases. The bilateral agreements that the US concludes with third countries are generally to the detriment of the host country and gives the US extraordinary powers. Under agreement for the use of the Manta base in Ecuador, US forces were allowed to use the air base as well as the naval port of Manta and the facilities connected to the base free of charge. The agreement also gave the United States the right to fly over the country and receive the same treatment as the aircraft of the Navy of Ecuador in the seaports of the country. And the guaranteed immunity, it guaranteed immunity for personal, American personnel, as well as their families against detention by Ecuadorian authorities. And it gave the right for Americans who work at the base to enter and leave Ecuador with US identification without having to pay taxes and much less, less taxes on income or ownership and transfer of goods imported into Ecuador. So, problems of sexual violence, crime, impunity, environmental pollution have sparked a lot of backlash in uh, places like Okinawa. When the US wanted to build a new naval base, the locals organized daily blockades during three years in Okinawa. In 2008, construction activities were halted by a US court for environmental reasons. And it's just one example of how local military bases can pay off and why the international peace movement needs to express its solidarity and support. Foreign military bases, let's be clear, are neo-colonial outposts that promote war, violence, human rights violations, and environmental pollution. They are not in the interest of the local populations, neither for the taxpayers of the countries with military bases. Military bases the interests of multinationals. 
and the military industrial complex of the powerful leading elite. We must unite in this struggle, and as has been said before, with the peace, environmental movement, the social justice movement, with one clear goal, the closure of all foreign military bases. So I look forward to the presentations by many speakers this, today, the discussions and proposals of how we can strengthen movement against foreign military bases. I thank you.